to kind of rehash the, the, the eternal question, why is it different this time? Is it different this time? Well, what has happened between 2017, which is when we had the last peak in Bitcoin and now, is that there have been changes in terms of the regulatory environment, and they're also, which as a result have allowed larger, more institutional players to get involved in the market. On the payment side, we're starting to see companies such as PayPal and Square uh, allow their account holders to actually transact in Bitcoin. And we can see on the other side amongst institutional investors, the likes of Fidelity and Guggenheim Partners who've either opened funds or have indicated interest in having a certain not insignificant portion of their assets potentially in Bitcoin. So the two concerns that a lot of critics have uh, when it comes to this Bitcoin rally are, are twofold. And one of them you've actually addressed is that the market is really dominated in terms of holdings by a handful of, of big whale Bitcoin investors, right? And the other one is, is usability. Yes, it's a store of value, you can ask, but you can't go down to the store and buy something with it. Are there developments on either of these concerns that would make it more mainstream, acceptable and loved? Well, we think certainly what PayPal has offered to do here uh, in terms of allowing transactions to be settled in Bitcoin uh, is certainly a significant move forward towards making Bitcoin more of a unit of exchange, if you will, for day-to-day -day purposes. But that doesn't make anything different here as far as the volatility is concerned. At least you know when you go down to the store and you have a dollar in your pocket, you've got a pretty good idea what that dollar is actually worth. You know, with the Bitcoin, you could be going into the grocery store or the bar or the restaurant or what have you, um, assuming COVID's not around, and you wouldn't necessarily know what exactly it was you had until you actually came time to transact. Let's talk about the store of value uh, part of things because and now we're seeing the GTV chart on the Bloomberg showing that the Bitcoin to gold ratio is at its highest since early 2018. Are we seeing a shift from gold into Bitcoin and could it eventually replace gold at some point? Well, certainly the speculation has been that um, Bitcoin is effectively digital gold. And, and one might argue that with Bitcoin, we know there's going to be a finite quantity of Bitcoin produced over time. Gold, obviously, because still continues to come out of the ground. Um, but in terms of looking at this, if we were to see, and we have seen flows out of gold ETFs of late, and monies have been going into Bitcoin, but we haven't gotten up to a point here where it's appreciably higher. If Bitcoin were arguably, say, to be worth 5% of the value of gold right now, it would be approximately 30,000. However, we think that there are numerous constraints that still stand in the way of Bitcoin rising to those levels. One of those being is that central banks themselves have started to experiment with digital currencies. And at the same time, in terms of the traceability of transactions, uh, most governments like to know sort of who's getting money and how and from where. Uh, Bitcoin obviously has offered anonymity in that regard, despite the fact that transactions are recorded on the blockchain. But still, you have a desire on the part of governmental authorities, monetary authorities, to know sort of how money is actually moving around and, and who's actually doing the moving. On your point on central banks getting involved, we have seen the PBOC really fully supporting this. What do you think of the Chinese digital currency and could there be a risk that it actually ends up supplanting um, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies? Well, it, it's a bit of a conundrum. I mean, certainly if we look at China and, and we look at how electronic payment <clears throat> means of settlement, whether it's Alipay or others, have actually sort of moved the society away from cash and more towards digital, uh, it makes sense in terms of what the PBOC has been doing around digital currency. The other part of the conundrum is, is that actually it's speculated because a lot of the mining for Bitcoin early on was being done in China, that a lot of those holders may actually, of the large scale holders, may actually be in China. So, you know, from the standpoint of how the PBOC is going to affect those individuals and their holdings, obviously may raise some difficulties, not necessarily the same magnitude of Ant Financial's Hong Kong IPO being pushed off because of regulatory intervention. But certainly um, the PBOC will make its presence felt in this market. David, where to for this rally? Is, is it possible to talk about the idea of fair value going by technicals for Bitcoin? I know that some people have sort of been using technical analysis against Bitcoin and been saying that things appear to have been overbought. Um, so, you know, from that standpoint, I think what we need to see for Bitcoin to make a further move higher is for the incoming administration in the U.S. to put in place uh, further fiscal relief programs, which obviously depends upon the, the, the 
cooperation of Congress, but more importantly also to see what monetary authorities are going to be doing. Um, you know, we do think that this is a liquidity-driven asset, uh, much like stocks. Uh, and from that standpoint, we see Bitcoin as being something, even though people talk it as being a store of value, it's still something that's very much of a risk on asset in our point of view.